Welcome to the Answers for Elders radio show. Meet the trusted experts who will give you straight answers and will help guide you on the path of later life care. Now, here's your host, founder, caregiver, and CEO, Suzanne Newman. And welcome back, everyone, to Answers for Elders Podcast Network. And we are here with Lori Hudson from Hudson Insurance Solutions. And she is an amazing My Agent Medicare um, representative. And she is here on behalf of Humana, who is our major sponsor. And what I love about Humana's mission is they are, they call themselves a wellness company. And I know, Lori, you were, had a long career at Humana before you went off on your own. So you know that very well, that mission. Um, I am interested, we're going to talk a little bit now about social wellness. And this is something a lot of times people go, what do you mean by social wellness? It's the need for connection. And, and I think that's one of the things that really goes haywire a lot of times with seniors because they end up isolating a lot as they lose their functionality to be able to do things. And so they'll tend to withdraw. They'll tend to stay at home more. Um, we saw it a lot during COVID when they were staying home. And now it's difficult for people to come out and be, but it's important. And this is the most important, I think one of the most important things when it comes to Alzheimer's and dementia, because again, if you're not using your brain, you're not connecting, you're not interacting with people, you can lose some functionality. And so Lori and I are going to talk a little bit about how to achieve social wellness. And most importantly, we've got a very, very fun topic in social wellness of uh, stepping up and living your bucket list. And that's really what it's about. And Lori, what do you, what are we, what are we going to talk about today? We are going to talk about uh, traveling, but also uh, the main thing is living abroad. Uh, there's so many, um, seniors that are doing that now. Yes. Well, especially because this, as things have gotten so expensive in the U S it's cheaper to live in Mexico. It's cheaper yeah. to live, you know, in other places. Um, what are you finding? I guess, what are the most popular uh, destinations? I mentioned Mexico, but I'm curious, where do people tend to go to? Yeah, Mexico is still very popular. Uh, and also, so the top three really are Mexico, Costa Rica, and Portugal. And, really? And then a lot of people go to um, Thailand as well. So they go to Thailand. And, and that's one. interesting. So um, is, the, is the driving reason, obviously it's the need to experience a new culture, but it's also a, the quality of life, I could imagine. It is a quality of life. There's a lot of financial uh, reasons that people do it. Uh -huh. uh, you can live on your social security pretty comfortable, comfortably in some of these uh, other countries where here you can't, most places in the U.S., you can't even pay your rent with your no. <laughs> check. And so a lot of people are opting in uh, because of uh, just the financial reasons alone. Mm -hmm. And then the yeah. warmer climates are, uh, of course, the more popular um, as well. People want warm mm -hmm. weather. Yeah, yeah. And and thinking about, you know, this whole process, it's like, um, you know, a lot of times we think about what would it be like to live somewhere else? And, you know, we don't even think about it here. I know that I had a um, family member come visit me from Sweden this earlier this year. And she was just aghast at how how expensive everything is here. And I don't even think about it. It's like, well, <laughs> I don't know. But, you know, she was in, I, I always thought Sweden was expensive. She that's, goes, no, it's, you yeah, know. That's but, what I thought too. Yeah. <laughs> so so, there. You well, know, it's, she lives obviously outside in the Northern sector of Sweden. So. Yeah. And the Scandinavian countries tend to have uh, the, best health care. Yes, uh, they do. And that's one of the factors that people need to consider. Yeah. What's the health care like? Yeah. Yeah. I, I do know that. So I guess when, when we're talking about the decision-making process to live abroad, what are some of the factors that go into that? Well, I think health care is one of the main ones. You know, we want to be somewhere where 
uh, there is uh, good health care. And that's one of the things about Thailand that people like is that the health care system is very good. Oh, wow. But there's a lot to think about when you're thinking about health care. So you want access to the uh, to providers. Well, you want to be able to, you have to be able to afford to mm -hmm. uh, purchase a health care plan. Mm -hmm. and, and you need access to your things like doctors and um, emergency rooms, things like that. But then there's also ambulance, uh, you know, what's the ambulance system like? Um, mm -hmm. We lived in Mexico for a year, my husband and I did. And we would see the ambulances going down the the main drag and they nobody would move over for them. And I'm thinking, oh my gosh, I don't know if I would want to be somewhere where yeah. they don't move over for an ambulance. Yeah. I think about those kinds of things. Yeah. You have to think about proximity for, uh, you know, the healthcare, but also proximity for people to come and visit you. Mm -hmm. you know, what's it going to be like to, if you want to have family members and people come visit you? Mm -hmm. uh, we were looking at a, a place called Roatan Island, which is right off of, uh, it's part of Honduras, but it's off the island. They all speak English. It's beautiful. It's very um, affordable. It's and what great. is the name of it again? It's called uh, Roatan Island. Oh, Boatan. Roatan. Roatan. Yeah. Roatan. 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 Yes. We almost bought a vacation home there. And then uh, we started seeing the cost of flights getting in there. So we started thinking, well, you know, our people, our family members, will, are they going to be willing to spend that kind of money on an airline ticket? You've got to transfer flights. Mm -hmm. So there was that. And then I joined a Facebook group, which is one of the ways that is really good to kind of get a feel for certain areas is there, there are Facebook groups out there for mm -hmm. different areas. Well, during COVID, I saw how they were handling their um, emergency electrical system, which is a private system. And I was not really comfortable with that. So, uh, um, you know, there's those factors as well. What's the mm -hmm. infrastructure? What is it? Is it Unless you can be off the grid. Is, <laughs> there you go. Is it yeah. privately held uh, utilities? What, yes, um, yes. You know, can you get internet? Um, you yeah. know? How remote because you know a lot of people you want to go somewhere that's warm weather affordable but then sure. you want to be able to stay connected with family so i have a question um you're a medicare rep and we talked about health care so how does it work for people on medicare who travel or live abroad what happens well, Medicare itself, if you're traveling, Medicare itself does not cover out of the country. So you have, unless you have an advantage plan or a supplement, you don't have any kind of emergency okay. or anything out of the country. So there's that to, to consider. Uh, if, you, if, you're, if you have a supplement, then there is some coverage on that and an advantage plan, but it's emergency only. Mm -hmm. If you go, if you live out of the country, you can keep your Medicare A and B. Some people do that. I have clients that actually keep their Medicare A and B. And then when they come back, they come back for some of their health care in the States. So okay. you can do that. But if you have an Advantage plan and you're out of your service area for more than 60 days, then you're, um, you can't maintain that Medicare Advantage plan. Oh. So that to think about. But you can, if you're really all in, and you're and you're moving out of the country, you can actually suspend your Part B Medicare. Really? People that do that, you can suspend that, and then you can reinstate it when you, if you move back. Mm -hmm. which I have okay. had um, some clients that do that as well. Okay. Okay. So, for example, if you're going to move to Mexico, obviously healthcare is socialized, right? So you don't pay for that. Is that? Am I right on that? Or you do have to buy an insurance policy. In oh, you do. Okay. You do. So even the countries, and I'm not an expert on every country out there, but even uh, the a lot of the countries that are socialized, if you're coming in as what we call an expat, mm -hmm. you're going to have to pay for it. Mm -hmm. but yeah. Some of it's yeah. luck of the draw too, but sure. you, be, um, you don't want to be left high and dry, you know, if you mm -hmm. have a medical issue. So it's one of the place, the things to research before you move.
Really? Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, and there's a lot of people that have been disillusioned with the U S I, you know, and um, we won't go into the political climate or anything, but I think, you know, it's expensive and, and certainly we love the country that we live in, but there's also considerations. And I think it's one of the things that um, certainly there's a certain element of the population that says, you know, we want to go live someone somewhere else. And that's part of that connection to another culture. And, you know, it, I've actually thought about moving to Sweden because a lot of my relatives are there. Right. But I don't know if I ever would. Um, but it's an interesting th- thought anyway. Yeah, it is. And it's something that, uh, we think about, and then we think it can't be a reality. Yeah. But uh, again, with all the technology now, you know, join yeah. the Facebook group, there's, uh, international, uh, expat organizations that you can join and mm-hmm. recommend for people to, th- if you're thinking about it, to rent a place for three months. Mm-hmm. You know, just absolutely just try, try it out, rent it out for three months and just see what you think about it. And, um, you know, there's also, I want to mention, and I don't know if it's still, I forgot to look it up and see if it's still around, but there's a program called Work Away. I don't know if you've ever heard ah. of it, but you can actually go and work for people in other countries. And Mm -hmm. it could be something, and I had looked at that for us thinking, oh, that would be something really fun. And it could be something, one of them was uh, helping run the, it was in uh, Budapest. It was helping run their their little um, B&B. There was one in Africa where you're helping them make their jams and jellies and sell them. Oh my goodness. And then you, that's your trade for staying there is, uh, you do some work and it's usually uh-huh. three hours a day of work and we have some friends they're younger people but they they do it yeah they've gone and done it absolutely so all kinds of things you can think about and you know just um it can be a reality Yes, yes. Well, you know, Lori, this is all things to consider. And certainly we're interested in um, providing the information. And so in the meantime, um, we love what you do to represent Humana also with other organizations as well. And um, Lori, how do we reach you? The best way is my website, which is Hudson Insurance Solutions, and it's H-U-T-S-O-N insurance solutions.com. And so if you're out of state, I work with Washington and California. And if you're in other states, you can fill out the contact me form uh, as well. So if even if you're outside uh, in another state, I'll put you in touch with somebody. Perfect. Perfect. And Lori and I are going to be back for one more segment right after this. We at Answers for Elders thank you for listening. Did you know that you can discover hundreds of podcasts in our library on senior care? So visit our website and discover our decision guides that will help you also navigate decision making. Find us at AnswersForElders.com.